Hi, Dante. Hello. Uh, welcome back to the Fresh Cred. Good to see you. Craig, I, I feel like I'm deserving of a better introduction. Like, hola, muy buenos días. Gracias a todos para venir hoy. Estamos muy feliz para tener ustedes aquí hoy. With 50 plus years of combined produce, supply chain, entrepreneurial, and business experience, Craig Slade and Ed Bertad discuss the impacts of fresh produce on their lives and health. This podcast is a casual conversation between two friends just trying to get better. This is The Fresh Cred. Uh, no, man, I listen, I very much enjoy this, guys. <laughs> I enjoyed last year's experience. Um, I realized that we jumped right into this. Let me let me give an appropriate introduction for those who maybe don't know who I am. Uh, I'm Dante Galeazzi with the Texas International Produce Association, and our elevator pitch is pretty easy. We advocate, educate, promote, and represent on behalf of the $11 billion of fresh produce that's either grown in the state of Texas or considers Texas first point of arrival for North American distribution. Wow, that's pretty good. I love that elevator pitch. Concise. Good stuff. And we're, we're, we're so Tippa, who is the engine behind Viva Fresh, which is coming up. That's going to be a, a, a big part of what our focus is, is talk about the upcoming uh, event, Viva Fresh. And what year is this? How many, how many we've done? This is, uh, this, this this is year number. nine. Nine. Uh -oh. no, we got next year's big 10, the big 10 year anniversary next year. Yep. What symbolizes 10 years? Is that like a paper anniversary or is that plastic anniversary? I mean, it's not diamond or platinum or what does that wind up being? We'll have to look that up. Paper. I don't I, think there is a paper one. Yeah. Like a greeting card or something. Yeah. Now I think that, I think 10 is for past paper. I think paper's like year one, maybe two. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know there was a paper, to be honest with you, so that's news to me. All right. Well, we'll get to that tip of stuff eventually, but I want to go to coffee. Ed, look look here what I got, bud. I don't know if you can read that. Uh, the high, it's called the High Achiever, and it's by Bulletproof. Now, I've had regular Bulletproof coffee, so I'm shopping yesterday, and I run across this energy-focused, enhanced coffee. Um, and I had to pick it up. Well, it was buy one, get one free. So that was another draw for me is, uh, you always have me at buy one, get one free. And then, uh, the high achiever coffee. So I took, I've done this morning. So I don't know how, how, how fired up I'm going to be today because I not only did the high achiever bulletproof coffee, but I had a slab of butter off in my high achiever mm. coffee. So, brother, I am telling you, first cup of the day, full octane, full force. So, just get ready for the rest of this show. And uh, you got to try this stuff out. Are you out. fasting or did you eat something? No. I mean, no, I don't. You know, I eat once a day. That's pretty much my normal MO. Okay. Well, there's something. Day. There's a little snack I think um, would go very well with that. And they're called Keto Crisps. And there's a flavor okay. that come. That, have you heard of them? Taste, taste nope. can do, I think, as a manufacturer. It's Keto Crisp, and they have a flavor that's salted butter, and it literally Ooh. tastes like you're eating a stick of butter. And you probably are. So let me ask real quick. Why why the butter in the coffee? What is it because you need the fat? Is it because it makes coffee taste better? Like, I just, I struggle with the idea of taking butter and putting it in my coffee. So it's got to do with the oils that's in butter, and it's um, MTX, MT something, MT, it's some kind of particular oils, but it, and you can use, instead of using straight butter, a lot of people use what's called ghee, uh, yeah. which is mostly all fat. Um, it, it's, it's the part without the dairy, uh, basically, if you're familiar with the ghee. And it's got to do with that oil content, and somehow it, your brain – um, functions better with the access to that, that oil. And it's so, partly what ke keto is believe in. So let me, let me ask something. I mean, since we're in the produce industry, wouldn't eating half of a ripe avocado in the morning with a little bit of bagel seed and a, and a few flakes of, of sea salt achieve the same goal and probably even taste a little better. 
so stopping, you, you did good at the very front end. So yes, on the avocado, uh, boo on the bagel. No, 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 no. Bagel seeds, bagel, like, like the, the bagel all mix. You don't, you don't have that as a seasoning in your, uh, in, in your no. cabinet. Oh man. I love, no, no. I love that. You put stuff. those sesame seeds on top with the, you know, some of those rye seeds and, and some of the, I can't remember. Is that different than tahine? Are. Oh yeah, no, this is not even close to tahini, man. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? You're gonna have you Craig put an avocado in his coffee next, and that's I'm not sure how that's gonna go. It well, may listen, not Craig, taste great, I'm gonna but... send you some of this bagel all seasoning, which is fantastic. You, you send me some. I, hey, I do me a favor, Dante. Oh. You, you live near Ed. Can you go by his house and pick up my bag of coffee that he's been sending me for the last two years and, and send that as well? I'm off that. <laughs> yeah. That, I think that canceled out. That order canceled out. Have yeah, to it definitely canceled call out. Customer because service. Of... <laughs> so yeah, yeah, but it's got to do with the oils, uh, sure. and and in your brain really kicks off. It gets your brain into mode. Because like I say, I don't eat um, typically at all uh, until evening. Uh, occasionally, you know, there's days that I'll eat uh, something. I'll go to lunch with somebody or so whatever, but. I'd say 80% of the time I eat once a day. And so in the morning, I don't want to mess up the, any kind of ketone energy or whatever that I'm going to have for a day. I don't want to tip my body off. So butter is about the one thing that you can have. There is the problem with that. Not doing ghee is there is a little bit of, um, with the fat, with the uh, dairy that's in there, it's not completely officially, uh, keto free or keto, uh, loyal. Or what you would call it. So, but isn't coconut oil an, also an alternative? Yep, coconut oil. Like I say, the avocado would work. Again, I, I, I don't know about your yeah, I don't know about your bagel seeds. Uh, I mean, I don't know, but uh, an avocado with some salt on it. Yeah, you can go that route, Dante. I think that's. A good where point. do bagels typically grow? You know, that's a good there's, question, man. There's bagel uh, seeds. Yeah. We should uh, maybe maybe we should look into that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure both of you guys have this delicious breakfast that I'm talking about, which is half of an avocado with some bagel seed flavoring on top and a little, you know, fl few flakes of salt at Viva Fresh. Because in my opinion, when, when avocados get to that point where, you know, it's, it's like two or three dollars a box, uh, movement has slowed down and there's no problem, you know, eating mm -hmm. half myself for breakfast. Man, that is probably one of the best breakfasts ever. Um, you know, right now I'm on bananas and apples. That's fine. Some oatmeal occasionally. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to make sure you guys get to sample this at, at Viva Fresh. So the next time we have this next year, you guys can be like, oh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm hey. regularly eating half an avocado in the morning now. We, I think we just knocked out the menu for Viva. <laughs> We're really getting things oh, done. Wait. Check. You can check Put that off the list. Done. Ah, right, Dante, I've got it. Okay, but breakfast I'm gonna menu in. done. I'm gonna I'm gonna piss off all my my. Uh, oh my God! Friends. Yeah, you can't. You, you're you're sugar bombing yourself. Don't don't sugar bomb with a freaking banana and an apple first start of the day. You might as well take a hypodermic needle and fire uh, a load of sugar into your arm and say, "Yeah." Don't. Do That's it. not what you do. <laughs> no, I gotta say. Save that, save that for your dessert after dinner. Don't do it first thing in the morning. I'm telling you. I mean, you, you, it's, it's like, like I said, I, I don't know how breakfast in this country became a sugar bomb, right? If you think about most breakfasts, right? I mean, outside of, you know, the bacon or sausage or now you avocado, which is, is a new trend. Now, avocado is not, is not a known staple for breakfast item in, in the United States. It's becoming that. But anyway. How in the world donuts, pancakes, freaking cereal? <coughs> oh, all we the have sugar. the Kellogg brothers to thank for that, and and yeah. they're 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 uh, disputing views. But I mean, we could be on that all day. I don't know that we want to go down that direction. Yeah, no, because I'll get up on my well, box. Okay, I don't want to go down that direction either. But there's the foods that made America on the History Channel. If you've never watched it, it's really interesting how those guys started. I mean, one of them was a doctor, and he ran or owned and ran a sanitarium and so when they started inventing breakfast cereal i mean it was for He's going down the rabbit hole yeah health reasons I, i've seen that you've seen it go ahead yeah yeah those shows are really interesting yeah no no and you're right health reasons and people needed to poop 
and uh, God. eating just straight okay. up. Well, that's this is the second podcast where that word came up. We're this two podcasts podcast in, we're two in podcasts into this year, and we've talked poop twice. But yeah. We're going to continue. Well, you brought it up, but it's true. You know, part of that said they needed, you know, healthy, healthy movements, uh, as my mother used to call them. Uh, it's important to, to health and he freaking eating a bowl Craig, of fiber is not great. The appropriate term is a BM or bowel movement. BM bowel movement. Yeah, that's true. All right. Yeah. And we've that's officially had, gone geez, off the rails. I, I used to get, well, but no, I, I, so actually, Ed, I, I feel like this is a great time to pivot to Viva Fresh and one of the goals that we have, I mean, you know, wow, the clean eating is, challenge say, is exactly what we're talking about. We have as America lost touch with why we eat right we at some point we decided that we eat just for for flavor that's it right 100 percent. it was flavor driven pleasure driven that was something along the lines our society said nope i don't like the way that tastes put more sugar on it nope i don't like the way that tastes add more saturated fat nope i don't like the way that tastes do you know insert xyz chemical ingredient for a point, I get it. There, there's some things that you that just needed a little flavor. But as a result, I feel like our society lost touch with part of the reason why we eat, and that's because our bodies need healthy fuel. Craig was already talking about don't start off your day with sugar. Start it off with something else and put sugar in the diet later on. Viva Fresh is about that. I mean, clean eating challenge is about that. We want America to look at the lifestyles we've been leading and say, okay, there is an opportunity here to do something better. There is an opportunity that as the industry, we should be advocating to our neighbors, our family, our communities to say, look, I'm not telling you, you have to do X, Y, Z, just put a, you know, put an apple in your diet. Occasionally put a salad in your diet. Occasionally put some carrots in there. I mean, the local university UTRGV said that something like 38% of all kids in Texas don't eat a vegetable at all in the day. Something like 20% of them don't eat a fruit at all in the day. I mean, that, what does that say about our society? Are we encouraging our kids not to eat fruits and vegetables? It, it's, you know, Ed, Craig, you guys are both, I'm going to say it, health fanatics. You guys are both living embodiments of, of what we want healthy living to be. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on it? Well, to the sugar thing, I mean, what comes to mind when you're talking about, when Craig was talking about, since, you know, when did, bre did, when did morning and breakfast become, would you say sugar bomb? Sugar bomb. Uh, I mean, I think that it, the fact that when you wake up in the morning, your blood sugar levels are typically low and most folks have cravings. Um, I think that really plays into the opportunity to present um, foods that are associated with breakfast to be including a significant amount of sugar would that make sense does to me yeah wow <laughs> it, i mean but it, I makes scored one today. It, it, it makes sense but it doesn't make it oh, right no. well i'm no, no no i didn't say it made it right yeah yeah i, I know right. that's uh, yeah i know that was your comment that wasn't your thing hey mason by the way is this better i mean do you want that big light behind me and me centered how do you want this oh he's gone anyway you look great well yeah and, well anyway, he's, I, he's sending he's blowing my phone up on the other side saying hey could you get in the center of the screen well i'm trying like hell to keep the window out keep me in focus so anyway but yeah ed you're spot on uh as to probably why we did it and you think about caffeine coffee is a jolt um simple sugars or sugar straight away that 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 IV that Dante's jamming in his arm every morning, you know, it's a quick hit of energy, right? That sugar is easily converted um, to an immediate energy. But the problem is, is it's, it's a fast burn, right? It's, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's lighter fluid on a log, if you will. Right. And, you know, the log will continue to burn and give you heat and produce energy for a long period of time. That lighter fluid is just poof, for that, you know, that first spark, that first get going. So, um, if, yeah. You know. And Dante, I see you're ready to, to say something there. Cause I'm, I I'm am. beating and, you up about your sugar bomb. Well, well because so he had a very eloquent segue 
Like it was perfectly <laughs> he timed. He did, and you know, and, and I, I, wanted, I wanted to mark off. He went from poop to that. I wasn't sure how we were going to segue poop to that, but I mean, excellent well, job, Dante. By the way, it's bowel movement. So we went from bowel <laughs> movement to the importance of eating healthy. So, Craig, I do have a, I know you hate them, but I do have these dry, unsalted, roasted peanuts. And, uh-huh. it, you know, I, I, and I change up by sometimes it's pecans. Sometimes it's, it's, I know I say almonds, but, you know, for everyone else who's not from California, it's almonds, but almonds, um, you know, I, I have a mid morning snack as well. Uh, you, you gotta, this, this little body requires a lot of energy, uh, but, but not a lot of food at once. I just don't have the stomach for it. But I, I think I, I, guys, we are talking about exactly what it is that we set out to try to do, man, what is this four years ago? three or four years ago when we started the clean eating challenge, right? There is so many, I don't want to say misperceptions, but I think there's so many different ideas about what healthy living or healthy diets should be and can be. And I don't think we want to change any of that. We just want to say, look, no matter what your take is on healthy, it should be including fruits and vegetables because fruits and vegetables are the original vitamins. Fruits and vegetables have a lot of the natural things that our bodies need for good functioning human health. And it just feels like, at least here in the United States, our society has moved away from fruit and vegetables. I mean, my wife showed me a picture of one of her friends joking about her throwing a bag of kale in the trash, right? She, she has a HelloFresh recipe. The HelloFresh recipe says, take your take out the bag of, of washed dried kale and prepare it. And the, and the picture in the Instagram is the bag of washed dried kale in the trash. And the title is, this is what HelloFresh said. Here's where I think the kale needs to go. But why is that? When did we decide that vegetables were the punchline for, for bad jokes about, hey, let's just throw this whole meal away? What, what is that about? Well... Ed, I mean, it's been a punchline since George Bush was president, the, the original George Bush, the old man. I mean, you know, him and the broccoli and, you know, not wing broccoli. I mean, it's vegetables have kind of been uh, relegated to the to the sidecar. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it's one of those deals. And, and, and let's face it, the American standard diet hasn't done us any favors. I mean, that whole thing has been, you know, got bought off by everybody yeah it, it, the the american standard diet is nothing more than and lobbyist and uh them getting their way and obvious that the fruit fr- fr- produce industry does not have the financial backing that the dairy industry has that the grain industry has you know freaking worst diet in the world that you could freaking get on would be the american standard diet flat out no question and, and throw that, that government print- stuff and out the window and that, Craig, is exactly is exactly why Viva Fresh is so important. That's exactly why what we are doing today, what Ed did with the Clean Eating Challenge, what you do, Craig, when you try to tell people, hey, are you thinking about what you're putting in your mouth? All of that is so important, and that's why it ties together. That's why I love what I do, right, is because we're bringing the message to people. We're telling them, look, <laughs> there is an opportunity here to improve not to not to stop everything you're doing but to improve what you're doing to make your bodies healthier by making small changes in your daily diet you don't got to throw out your entire pantry just add something to your pantry your pantry is missing you know vegetables we don't care if it comes from a can or it comes from the the frozen section we'd prefer fresh but at the end of the day if you're eating fruits and vegetables you're doing your body right. You're certainly helping our industry, and ultimately, you're helping the country because uh, let's face it, we're in a health we're in a health epidemic here uh, throughout the country. I know we talked about the, the last our last podcast. We don't got to go down that road again, but I, I think it behooves us to to challenge listeners to say, what have you done in the last year since you last heard Fresh Gred? Uh, you know, and we talked about Viva Fresh. What have you done in the last year to make a small change in your diet? What have you done in the last year to to help your family eat a little better? Um, you know, and if you're looking for those ideas and you're in the industry, Viva Fresh is a heck of an opportunity because that's what we make all of our meals. If you come to Viva <coughs> Fresh, everything that you eat 
that we have prepared as part of that that show is associated with fresh produce and unique presentations or unique recipes that present fresh produce, right? I mean, how, how many of you guys have ever had a sweet onion breakfast tart? I, I know Craig, don't even, Craig, don't even venture into this. Yeah, yeah. There's no, no sense in asking me that question. Yeah. If it, yeah. When you say breakfast, if it means it's before, you know, one o'clock, I probably didn't eat it. Well, I mean, you can have breakfast for dinner from time to time, but I mean, I, I totally agree with Dante, obviously. Um, I think we both do. Um, and all jokes aside, and I'm, I'm typically a skeptic on almost everything. Um, although it might not seem like that at first glance, but when, when Craig presented the idea of the cleaning challenge four or five years ago, when we were in that boardroom, um, I frankly thought it sounded like a good, um, promotional opportunity, but it's really turned into so much more. And, and I say that I'm skeptical to mean that I rarely think that programs and you know um stuff like this works long term but um i've been involved since the beginning first um class to or first group to take on the challenge and and since then have done um some mentoring if if we can call it that maybe coaching or cheering um look the reality is it doesn't click for everybody at the same time, I think everybody at one point in their life will have that opportunity to take, whether they take it or not, it's a different story. Um, for me, it was way later than I wish it would have been. Um, and I'll, I'll never stop working on it, so to speak. But um, the consciousness of eating healthier, exercising, um, you know, I told, I don't know if I said it on the last uh, podcast, but challenging myself. I mean, I've done some stuff here this year or just maybe it's drastic. Maybe it's over the top. I don't know. I mean, my wife has given me a hard time because I was going to go to Costco to pick up one thing. And I said, okay, well, I'll show you, I'm going to get on my bike and ride 26 miles round trip for that one thing. <laughs> you know, it wasn't even necessary, but I did it. Talk, yeah. Okay. Um, no, when we we talked about it. I di- you know, we me and you talked about this, which I think is a great thing to talk about. Um, it never got actually published, so we actually had a podcast where this was on, but it never got produced. So, so it's okay. brand new for everybody else except me. Well, it's brand new. Nathan. So my point is, like, you know, we're, I I've seen it firsthand, and I'm not. This isn't just um, bugle oil. I, I really think that. Beautiful. You know, we're helping people and changing lives. And again, it, maybe not at 100% uh, efficacy, but it's happening. And if it's one person, as far as I'm concerned, it's worth doing. And, um, you know, it's we're starting to catch catch fire. I mean, I think it's, you know, everybody's going to progress at different rates and have different motivations and different approaches. Um, you just have to find, you know, what works for you. Um and- Go ahead. And Ed, that's key right there. What you're saying, everyone's going to do it at different rates. Everyone's going to have their own path. Everyone's going to progress at a different speed. And I think that's one of the biggest things that we have promoted with the clean eating challenge is that is okay. Everyone is on their own health path. People, not everyone is going to want to get on their bike and ride 26 round miles just to prove a point to their wife. I mean, good for you. Um, <laughs> God bless her for still loving you. Uh, I mean, she was probably just like, oh, man, I, I need to say that more often to get him out of the house for however many hours that took. Um, yeah, I was going to say, she probably did it intentionally. Yeah, yeah. But I, you are exactly right, Ed. The clean eating challenge is not about, you know, uh, well, if you're on the paleo diet, you cannot, you cannot leave these limits. You can only eat these things. No, no. We are talking about making small changes that have big impacts over time. And how now, easy it is to do that. Now, I think it's worth mentioning, at least I believe that the sooner and more drastically you get out of your comfort zone, the better chance you have of succeeding. Um, I'm not big for me personally of, you know, it's either a hundred miles in that direction or an hour or, or not at all. Um, and that's the only way that I got through that first challenge, which was I couldn't, 
cheat, so to speak, at all on my diet or anything like that because I knew I wouldn't come back. Now I feel like, um, you know, I make deposits and withdrawals. I mean, like the bike thing, right? Let's say, you know, I have a dessert one night. Well, next day I'm going to, I'm going to punish myself. I'm going to self impose some sort of, uh, redemption, right? Sure. But I never even thought like that before. So that's yeah. really where I'm going with this is I think there's a lot of folks just floating through life and just, Hey, this tastes great. This feels good. This do this more of that more is better. I mean, Hey, I get it. Like, and, and, and that, that's the part Dante, you know, so for me, you know, there's two things, you know, so the clean eating challenge piece is, is really originally about the industry and us messaging to the community, eat more of the stuff that we grow. But instead of verbally talking about it, living the example and showing the difference it can make. So that, that's one component of it. Yep. But then when you get to just what Ed's talking about, and for me, the part that, that the message I think that is important for everybody is, look, you're in control. Okay. Um, what frustrates me is quite often, um, the excuse train genetics time so many different things consumption of, of food is completely within your control right it's your decision to to drink a coke it's your decision to eat a salad or versus something else so you, those are all completely within your control right you, you you can make those conscious decisions what ed's doing right ed spent many years Basically, what he's saying is, is just so unconsciously eating. He went through life unconsciously eating, which is the way most people eat is unconsciously. They just assume, hey, somebody put it in a package or that, that everything, all food is, is, is equal and it's not. And, and so he is now, which is the same place I'm at. I'm in a conscious consumption area where I, I, I think about what I'm doing and, and, and I think about, I, I do plenty of things and I eat plenty of things that I shouldn't, that aren't healthy. Uh, but I knowingly make that choice. I don't make that and blame something else. If I choose to have something that's not healthy or whatever, like Ed said, either I think about how am I going to, you know, help my body, you know, overcome this so I can enjoy this, this moment of pleasure or, Hey, I'm not going to eat for this period of time so I can, you know, have my body chance to clean up but again it's about being conscious about it and recognizing that you're really responsible for the choice it's not some unforeseen force quite often that puts you in the place that you're at guys you know what i love about this is there's three different people on this call and we have three different approaches to healthy eating and they're all right because the way i look at it is is the way we eat our scales right and so if I can eat more of the good things in my life than the bad, I feel like I'm on the, on the right path. And I think that's, that's really what we're talking about here is how do we get these, these scales? Again, this is just my approach. How do we get these scales to, to better balance or to be more of the good stuff in our bodies than, than the things that are bad for us? Because I feel like right now, again, I'm going to bring it all back around right now in America, the scales are the other way. We are eating more of the bad things. Our children are being given more of the things that are not healthy for them. Our, our diets are being pushed in the direction of more things that are not healthy for them. And we are not doing enough to bring that balance back. We're not doing enough to bring the good things. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm like everyone else. I go through periods where I have some time to kill. So I'll sit there on TikTok. And uh, because of the things that I like and don't like, I see a lot of health promotions. And I got to tell you, more often than not, instead of seeing a recipe for something with vegetables com coming up, I see promotions for vitamins. So the perception is, you don't have to eat vegetables, just take vitamins. Well, wait a minute. What? What? Really? That's, that's where we're going in society? Don't, you know, don't worry about changing your life. Here's the one silver bullet. Here's the pill that'll make you all better. We mm -hmm. all know that's not going to work. That, that pr has probably been the approach of American medicine since the 60s, and our health as a nation continues to go down because that has been the, the medical prescription, so to speak, the recipe for how we are going to fix 
you know, health problems in our country. And, and again, the clean eating challenge is about trying to support, trying to promote, trying to bring to the forefront the fact that your healthy life needs to include fruits and vegetables. The form of the fruits and vegetables is, is really up to you. Um, and it can happen at different levels, right? Like Ed said, there's people that want to go a hundred miles per hour in that direction because that's the only way they'll have success. Craig, you, you talked about, it, it's gotta be, you know, you've got to be more pushed on thinking about being better, making better choices. For me, I just look at it as, are you creating a balance? Um, so, and, and that's, what's great about the clean eating challenge. All three approaches are perfectly fine. All three approaches look at healthy eating in a different way. And all three approaches are right. Because all three approaches say, look, you can't just put whatever you want in your mouth. You got to think about it. And you got to think about it as a whole. Don't think about just the one meal. Think about it as a whole. Think about, hey, if I'm going to eat three times today, and I know that in the morning I'm, I want to have cereal, and in the evening I want to have that steak, why can't you have that salad at lunch? Why can't you instead opt for that mixed fruit bowl for breakfast? Why can't you opt for the veggie noodles, uh, you know, in place of the regular noodles once in a while? There are small changes you can make throughout your day that will help you, again, using my term, get you to that balance. And I think none of us are saying, I mean, it almost sounds like it, it's, it's hard, but yeah. the reality is it's not a punishment. I mean... It, when you like eating fruits and vegetables, yes, it's a little bit harder sometimes if you have to prepare maybe some things. And yeah, it's not easy. I mean, eating healthy is not easy. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of the times it's not, um, I wouldn't say not affordable, but not inexpensive. Um, sometimes, depending on what you're comparing it to, right? Um, if you're comparing it to a you know, uh, a pastry or something like that sometimes is a challenge, but I think, you know, getting folks turned on about fruits and vegetables and, and craving them and liking them and wanting to eat those things and particularly kids, right? I mean, I notice, yeah. I know that kids, I mean, I've experienced it with my own that have been introduced early on. They, they, I guess, um, like, there's not a better word for, for, I guess, crave, to eat those things, right? They, they want to eat those things. Um, but, they but, ask for those things. But Ed, the kids didn't arrive there on their own. How, how did those kids get to that point that they want that craving? It's because we, as their parents, gave that to them over time. That was the meal we kept giving them over and over and over and then over again. And so now they're at the point where that's the regular. That's what they expect every morning. And so when we decide, hey, we're going to eat healthy and as a family, tomorrow's the day, that's not their fault they don't crave it. That's not their fault they don't want it. That's our fault as parents. And again, that's what I'm talking about here is I'm talking about as a society, we got away from healthy eating. And now when we try to do it, so many people just take that healthy eating and they jam it down someone else's throat. And that's not what we're talking about with the clean eating challenge. We're talking about making small changes over time that have a big impact. Uh, you know, and, and I've got to touch on something else because I hear this all the time, right? Healthy eating is expensive. I, I'm going to stop you right there. My kids in the morning love to eat cantaloupe. They, well, they love to eat melon in general. I, I, Anyway, they love cantaloupe in the morning particularly. One cantaloupe right now costs us $5, and that's expensive. Normally, a cantaloupe is about $2.50 at the grocery store. So right now, a cantaloupe is $5. I cut up a cantaloupe on, on Monday morning for the kids. And it lasts them usually until about Wednesday or Thursday, depending on how hungry they are. That's their breakfast. And when it's not cantaloupe, then it's, you know, sometimes there's an ego involved, but I'll cut up a banana and throw the banana on top of the ego. So, you know, in a banana, what's a bunch, what's a, you know, for those of us in the industry, a hand or a bunch, what, what's a bunch of bananas cost you, right? Uh, let's say the bunch has nine bananas. It's probably about a buck 50. So if I'm eating one banana a day and my kids are eating one banana a day and I've got nine of them, that, that's going to last me the whole week. That's $1.50. What else can you get for breakfast that's less than $1.50? Because I'll tell you right now, it ain't eggs. You ain't getting eggs for a buck fifty. 
All right, before we get off, and we do need to, <laughs> we, need, we, we do need to get past this, but I, I do want to just, you know. That's just me, disclaimer to say, let me talk more about this. Yeah, exactly. Hey, man, it's pretty good, Ed. Yeah, um, I know you. Yeah, you do. Well, I'm going to try and be as succinct. So the scale system. So here, here's the deal. Uh, if you ask Ed why he's all in like he is, and if you listen to the first couple of podcasts, you'll know why Ed's all in, right? That's the best. I mean, Ed is all in like he is because he realized he could change his life by what he consumed and by exercise and by taking care. He, he realized that he could get off medications. He realized he could feel better. He could wake up feeling better. Uh, I'm in the same boat, right? Uh, mine really more comes down to, which I think this is the ultimate gauge. When you talk about scales, when you go to the doctor, right? And you know what scoring is, right? And you, you, you read those scores, right? And you take them home and you get your blood work done and you, you get off into them. And when, when things aren't right, you don't accept conventional wisdom that, okay, I'll start taking high blood pressure pills. No, I think you can take alternatives and try and do it with food and consumption, right? To me, it is, and, 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 and if you ask Ashley, who was on with us uh, last week, uh, you know, her whole deal and the clean eating challenge. I mean, she's dealing with lupus, an, a, an illness, right? She, she, she has that, disease, that illness, an autoimmune uh, disease, but, an autoimmune disease, but she's changed. She's been able to, uh, help and counteract her medication. She's talked about how, you know, really focusing on what she eat and going through the cleaning challenge really kind of put her in practice. But my deal is, is it's not just about, um, visually or just I, that, that's my only thing. The scale piece, it, to me, it's like, I don't, if you eat one salad a day and you weren't eating a salad a day before, I'm not sure that does much if it doesn't change your score. In other words, I'm saying take responsibility for your scores, for your health, for how you feel, because everybody that does, and you actually get into it like an Ed or like a me or an Ashley or whatever, when you start to feel better, nobody's got to tell you eat more of this or do more of that, right? That becomes a natural driving thing because you're like, holy Toledo, I am in control of this. I have some influence over it. And so that's always my thing is, believe me, you can do a lot of these things. There's only a small percentage of stuff that's completely out of your control. And maybe, you know, you've got to lean into medication. But, but the reality of it is you can change a lot by what you eat and how you live your life. And so I, I think this, you know, as, as we start to run up on time, I do want to say if there's people from the industry listening to this and you want to know more about what it is we're doing or you want to have this conversation with us or you want to say we're wrong, come to Viva Fresh because you've got a group of probably about 60 or 70 industry professionals that have gone on their journey for clean eating. And they will have this conversation with you because I feel like nobody gets into the clean eating challenge who is not passionate about the things we're talking about here today. So Viva Fresh Clean Eating Challenge, we've got 70 or so folks who are either in the program now, who have been through the program, or who have experiences associated with clean eating. And so this is a great opportunity, again, especially if you're in this industry, to think about how can I personally change my relationship with food? Did I... Craig, did I say that in a way that didn't didn't offend anybody? And we're we're online. Okay. I th I, I think oh, I'm sure you offended somebody. It's impossible yeah. not to offend somebody these days. But no, I think that was great. Super segue to get us closing Sounds us like out a on that. Great commercial. I it did. It's a good commercial, yeah. and it's a good way for us to move in. Viva Fresh. So so Dante, um, how was last year? Right. You know, I mean, real quick, how how were the numbers? Expectations. What are we looking at as we go forward into this year's show? So last year was fan freaking tastic. And I'll say that because you had, you had COVID that shut us out in 2020. And then we had a smaller scale show in 2021. And that was on purpose for health and safety reasons. So 2022, we're back. We're one of the first shows of the year that's fully wide open. And so, you know, this is, this is post pandemic. You've got a lot of people still concerned with health. We had a lot of people who were not traveling still. We had a lot of people with, their own various concerns and you guys are on this on our steering committee so you know we had a lot of question marks going into last year 
I got to tell you, we were excited with, with everything that happened. I mean, we had over 2,200 people attend the show. We had more than 300 retail food service buyers come back. Was that our, was that a record for the retail food service attendance? No, but that was pretty freaking great considering the challenges that we had faced the previous years. Um, I can tell you right now, we are already trending quite well. I don't want to spoil it because I, I told my <laughs> team that I'm going to, I will not release numbers until we're Damn, actually at Viva. I but a spoiler alert. I know, I know you did, but we are very excited. I mean, we are seeing, we are seeing the same lead up to this Viva Fresh that we did in 2019, where all of our records were blown out of the water. Attendance was at a record level. Uh, the buyer attendance record level exhibit exhibitors record level happiness record levels food record quality right i mean it was just it was awesome from start to finish and i feel like that's what people are going to see in 2023 is that same level of uh, the cliche word here awesomeness for the entire viva fresh event well tell us where we're going to be dante i'll let you oh. location wise Absolutely. Guys, we are going to be returning to the incredible Gaylord Texan Resort and Convention Center in Grapevine, Texas, a whopping three miles away from the DFW airport. I mean, it doesn't get any easier for transportation. You literally fly into the largest uh, airline hub in Texas and you get on a shuttle and five minutes later, you're pulling up to the front doors of this incredible hotel. Um, if you haven't been to the Gaylord Texan, it is awesome. It overlooks a lake. Uh, so, I mean, you have no idea you are literally in a major metropolitan area because when you look out your windows from this hotel, it's beautiful tree lines. It's this lake. You wake up to these gorgeous mornings, birds flying away. Uh, the hotel is somewhat circular because all of the rooms are built around an indoor atrium. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a giant glass ceiling. Uh, anyway, so it's built around this giant atrium. And so you've got restaurants and shops and pools. And I mean, from start to finish, the Gaylord is just an incredible experience. And so we have, as is the way with Viva Fresh, everything's there. So that way, when you pull up to the front doors on Thursday for golf or the wine experience, you don't have to leave that hotel until it's time to go to the airport because you've got restaurants You've got, <laughs> you've got two Starbucks. Um, you have, you have food delivery. You have, we're going to be feeding you. You've got different uh, experiences happening. So, I mean, it's really enclosed. Everyone's going to be there. We've got enough hotel rooms that, well, the hotel has enough. Hotel well, I was going to say before, you, you know, as this, this will drop here in about two, three days. Right. So potentially by the time this thing drops next week, if you haven't gotten your hotel at the Gaylord, uh, I'm just going to tell you, I suggest uh, you get on that ASAP because last year as, and I fully expect this year, we will be selling that dude out quickly. And people will be off site, which is good. It's just not as good as being on site for sure. Exactly. So, so and, uh, Dante, <clears throat> I need some help this year. Yes, I need help. I've never even seen the pool at the Gaylord because <laughs> I tend to be kind of busy during that week for multiple reasons. I'm not sure. going to try to get people to feel sorry for my, for me, but um, well, we got to keep Craig away from the pool because he's, he's not getting his work done <laughs> right between the spa, the pool, facials, massages, all that stuff. Wait. This, if, if, if he's not in the spa, deserve. he's in the pool. If he's not in the pool, he's at the steakhouse. Uh, so, so uh, Ed, which, and that which is an amazing steakhouse. What's that? See, I, I don't I even know. I mean, the end? Cause there's two pools. There's that lap pool down by the gym and then there's that kind of recreational pool and then if the weather's nice they'll have that outdoor uh water park open as well i'm i'm doing the lap there's pool, a water okay? park there I, i'm i'm practicing for my triathlon so i'm in the uh, lap pool working out ed's you know giving me a hard time about being at the pool and i'm trying to get healthy <laughs> i didn't even know there was a water park there i'm telling you i'm working when i'm as there you drive, Craig. as you drive oh in as you drive in on the right hand side is the gaylord water park i i know this because while, while you and I are working in, my wife is there with the kids and, and we've got some family that lives in Dallas as well. So they're there with their cousins. 
Uh, it is, guys, this is a family event. I mean, yeah. we really have tried to make Viva Fresh um, something that the entire industry can come to. It doesn't matter what, what level of, of the supply chain you're in for fresh produce uh, or what your travel expectations are. We want you to come to, Ga to, to Viva Fresh, to come to the Gaylord, to come to whatever the venue is, because we have made it in such a way that if you're coming to get 100% business done, that's what we got. If you're coming to spend time with your with your industry friends, that's what we're there for. If you want to bring the family so that way you can you can partake in a mini vacation with the gaps in the in the schedule, that's there too. And it's all self-enclosed. So when you park your car that one day, you don't got to get back in for three more days. I, I just want to give a shout out to the Gaylord, but their their venue, their their venue where we hold opening night reception, the glass cactus that that's right on Lake Grapevine. I mean, it's one of the coolest venues you will see, particularly at an industry event. I mean, it's a separate music venue um, with an, like a, I guess it's not a porch, but it's a, a deck that kind of extends Patio. out over the lake. So you can, and it's two story inside. I mean, it's 40,000 ish square feet. It holds like 2,500 people. Um, it is, it's pretty impressive. It's basically a standalone nightclub on the, on the on the grounds of the hotel with a southern style porch on both the bottom floor and the top floor that is wide open has the bar extending from the inside of the restaurant of the of the oh my gosh has a bar from the inside of the glass cactus extending to the outside <laughs> of the glass cactus so you don't got to go inside right i mean it is it is awesome it, it is the ideal entertainment venue for texas it's super cool so dante yes, what sir. about the fresh cred i mean we had the opportunity last year to be there <laughs> are you gonna let us come back this year you know craig not only are we gonna he, let you come his back phones probably year. have been ringing off the hook craig asking <laughs> folks asking if we're going to come what I'm back. Hoping. What are you I'm hoping yeah. you're talking yeah. about. But, uh, you know, he just, uh, I'm just curious if he's going to let us come back though. I don't know. So not only are we going to let the fresh cred come back because we got such positive and great feedback about having uh, a live uh, podcast happening in front of the expo. No, we are going to put it in the very center of the expo floor this year. So as people are walking on Saturday morning, and visiting our 200 exhibitors, they are going to get an opportunity to walk around and see what a live podcast looks like as it's happening from the epicenter of the expo. Because last year, let, let's set the stage for the audience, right? Last year, y'all were in the, in the foyer. So as people walked up to the expo, they got to see what was happening and they could stop before they went inside. This year, they're not going to have to do that. As they're walking around participating in the expo, they are going to get to see and hear what's happening. And even better is for you guys, since you guys are going to be broadcasting for the whole time, you guys will actually get to see and feel what's happening inside the expo instead of having to get it all secondhand from the, uh, from the speakers that you have coming up for the podcast. That's awesome. Craig. That is. Craig, yeah. Craig, Craig, ask me what I'm doing. Ask me what I'm doing. <laughs> I, well, I, I don't know. What are you doing, Ed? Because I, you know, it looks like you're I'm exercising your hand. Correct for autographs. Because oh, I think the autographs, yeah. the autograph requests. I'm sure are they be will be ridiculous. people knocking down the stage hey, to get your autograph. Yeah. No Ed, have you? We're gonna need security, hat? Dante. I've, have you ordered the foam hats for Craig yet? Yeah, so we can will. do like an ESPN game day and he throws on like the they broccoli hat and then the tomato hat and then the onion hat. And then the corn one. Mason, yeah. Mason oh, is in charge of that. the hats. <laughs> that, that Mason is in charge You really of the think hats. he's going to put anything on that hair? Yeah, I was going to say, Dante. <laughs> Other than some dapper Dan. <sighs> you know, as long as I've got a mirror after I take the thing off, but uh, we'll, we'll work on the, the, that's, it's, work on that's the hat. That's totally exciting. I think obviously it's a tall, um, order, I think, you know, if we weren't a little bit, um, I wouldn't say nervous, but it, nervously excited. I mean, we want to do well and we want everything to come off, um, well for, for Viva and for, um, for all of our participants. But I have a feeling that, um, we're not going to rest until 
we pull this off and everybody's happy. So I think it's going to be really, really um, cool and exciting. So we'll be in the middle, as you say, of the what's traditionally been the networking reception. I mean, the networking yeah. lounge. Correct. Okay. Well, great. Yeah, no, Are you ready? Yeah, we're, we're super, super grateful uh, for sure um, to be part of this. And, and, you know, we were grateful last year to be in the, in the foyer there uh, as people came in. That was a super – we had a blast doing it there. Did some great interviews. Uh, again, just couldn't have, couldn't have been more excited. But, yeah, to be inside on the show floor, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to contain myself, Ed. I mean, when it comes down to it, I just. I think the hecklers will keep you in check because, you, you know, I think the hecklers are going to be a little. There, there'll be a few more this year than last year. Let's put it that way. Well, hey, we'll Ed, see. just we'll make sure how... Craig doesn't like bring like snap away pants or something. I mean, I, I can I can hear him. <laughs> with excitement. We don't need him running around the show floor. With chones. This is still a professional. Come on endeavor. now. Yes. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> hey, man, we got to spice it up, Dante. Come on. <laughs> That's Whole what I'm talking program. about with the foam hats, man. I, I know. I like to. I like the, the pop away sweat. So, Hey, also, you know, something else I think that's, we got to really talk about what's coming and I'm super excited. We, you know, we, we, we spent a lot of time talking about changing your life by food. Right. Right. And we've got, uh, the, the, the speaker that's coming our, our um, I want to say a guest speaker, but it's the main speaker for the luncheon, I believe. Right? Keynote speaker. Yep. Keynote speaker. That's the word I was looking for. Dante, thank you so, so much. So this would be under the category what's different this year, right? Well, right. it's I mean, keynote speaker we've had. We've not had a anybody like this. I mean, to me, you know, this goes back to you talk about clean eating challenge, you talk about living example, you talk about difference food can make. So it's uh I believe it's Charlie Rocket, correct, Dante? It it is. So Ed, you're right, and and both of you guys, Charlie Rocket's very different. Because where we have had traditional kind of health experts, right? The, these guys are kind of top of their field, um, you know, or, or industry professionals, yeah, industry health professionals experts, professionals or chefs. This guy is very, very different because this guy is a multimillionaire who was a rap label CEO out of Atlanta, right? And in his 20s was making millions of dollars promoting rappers. And he made two chains famous, Ed, just in case you were wondering. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So, so anyway, this guy, this guy is rocking and rolling. But as a result of that, he ends up gaining a lot of weight. He ends up having a lot of health problems. And then he develops a tumor in his brain. <laughs> and it leads him to kind of stop and reevaluate his life. And that reevaluation results in a 180. And what I mean by 180 is he steps away from the rap label. He decides he is going to become healthy. He focuses on clean eating. He focuses on exercise. And now he has taken that dedication, just like Ed, right? He said, nope, I'm not going to do this a little bit. I'm going to go 100 miles per hour in that direction now. And this guy has emerged, and he is a promoter of, of new lifestyles. He is a promoter of healthy lifestyles. And he helps people with their dreams. And that's something we'll get to at the end of this. But when he gets up there and he speaks to Viva Fresh, he is also going to be the youngest keynote speaker we have ever had. And I think that's huge because he is going to bring a different approach. He's going to be talking to a different generation with his message. He is going to come from a different set of experiences than any of our other speakers. And he is going to have a total different energy. Because this guy comes from the music industry. And let's face it, no one in the music industry sits at the microphone and talks like this and gives us. Yeah, I mean, he's, a, he's, he's somebody from popular culture, I would say. I was explaining to somebody the other day, like he's like the difference between an industry expert or health expert and, and pop culture. I mean, it's like they talk about rock and roll money. Like there's nothing that can beat rock and roll money. That's an old term, but music money, right? Folks right. that are in the music industry. I mean, it's so exponentially right you know, uh, it just grows so much faster. Um, anyway, sorry, go ahead. But he, no, but he encompasses, right but he encompasses clean eating challenge. He encompasses Viva fresh because you talk about him being an expert or not being an expert. 
look, he's an individual guy. So yeah, he did really good in the music business. Yeah, he mm-hmm. really, he he made multi million dollars in that. That that's certainly there. But he's still just a regular guy, right? That got overweight, that developed a tumor, that took control of his own life. He took control of what he consumed. He changed what he consumed. He got into an exercise program. He basically turned his life around as an individual, just like anybody else. You don't have to be a multimillionaire. You don't have to be any expert. You can do it. And that's what Viva Fresh, that's what we in the industry, we're trying to promote. We're trying to be living examples. Like if you want to take control and you want to change life, then, you know, this is the stuff that, that can, you know, what you're eating and how you're eating and the stuff that we're, that we're growing and selling every day can be part of that healthy living for sure. And I think he encompasses everything in the message that we're trying to put out there, young or old. Absolutely. And he's going to do it in a way that we haven't seen it done before at Viva Fresh, right? I mean, he's, his, his energy and the fact that, you know, Ed, Ed touched on pop culture. So it's funny when we were talking about speakers and they brought up the idea of Charlie Rocket. We had we had two of our marketing girls go. Well, actually, I I follow that guy on Instagram. What? Wait, this is the same guy that an, an actual like influencer is going to come up and speak to us. And so I think that's incredible because again, we normally bring kind of health experts, right? The guys that know the facts. We bring them up. And this year we said, you know what, let's bring someone that's been impacted in a different way from a different part of the sector. And just like you guys talked about, he's a normal guy from the music industry who did, who, who has had success in a couple different ventures. And now he's had success with healthy living. And that's why we thought he was such a great candidate to be our keynote speaker for Viva Fresh. That's happening on Saturday, March 31st, or uh, sorry, Friday, March 31st. So in to co- encompass all this together. Viva sure. Fresh is coming up. Yep. If you haven't registered, get it done right away. Get yep. your hotel rooms booked at the Gaylord right away and make sure you get the full package so you can go from wine tours to see Charlie Rocket to be on the show floor to see the Fresh Cred. Make sure you come, stay for the full event, participate in all that it has to offer because everything there is going to be amazing. It's going to be different. And it's, it, it is, like I say, it, it is something that you will not be disappointed if you're there. Right. So at it's the not end, your grandfather's father's trade show. It is. Let's, I mean, let's be realistic. Trade shows have been associated with excess and alcohol and late nights. And the reality is we're doing something different. Right. But I will give, all of us some credit, right? There, there's some discipline involved with this crusade for lack of a, I guess crusades are probably a pretty good word, crusades right? It's like, a good word. I like that. Uh, uh, crusade. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's a mission, right? It's a, it's, it's a movement. It's, it's, I feel has a lot of substance behind the, um, over and above the typical commercial activity that is what, allows us to have these events, right? You know, Ed, Dante, I, look, I you want to say something? I, I do. I, I think you're exactly right. And I think where we, where we kind of stepped away from that mold, so to speak, is we looked at, we looked at what we wanted to do here with Viva Fresh. And you guys know this because all three of us were part of those initial planning conversations was we said, look, we're not going to, we're not going to rinse and repeat or recreate the wheel here. We're going to do something different. And so we said, we, we looked at things and we went, what do we want to do first and foremost? Well, I don't like running from one thing to the next and thinking, gosh, darn it. I just don't have time to visit with the people that I came here to see. And so we created those spaces in the schedule. We relaxed it. We made the trade show. We, we tried to make Viva Fresh what trade shows are about, which is opportunities to network and meet people. But we did it with Texas hospitality because the purpose of Viva Fresh At the very core, one of those essential pillars is to highlight the region. And we're not just going to talk about the fruits and vegetables we move through this region. We're also going to show people what this region brings culturally, what this region provides culinary, and what this region can do to help lead the nation in fruit and vegetable consumption, in healthy living, and 
in how we drive new and unique consumption for the next generation. Well said, sir. Well said. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're getting up on some time here. Um, and I didn't even Dante. get to use my Pavlov's dog reference. Well, what, gosh, what darn it. Is, is that about the show? Okay, no, we were you, talking can... about when Dante was talking about earlier, I was, I was trying to think in my head what the theory was, but the hey, Pavlovian let's theory. Let, the let's Pavlovian save it. Let's theory. save it for the show floor. I, I like where you're going and I know what you're doing yeah. here. And I love it because I think that's going to be a great start off to when, when we meet again on the show floor in, in, 60, Look at Dante created content for next for next time. It's good. That's yeah, a yeah. it's that well, he's, he's, he's nice also, way of shutting also, me up. Also, also, did you see how he, he's also you know vying for a spot on the show, right? I mean, he's you know he hasn't seen the schedule we'll, yet, so that was we'll that was his our pitch. That he's, yeah. Call your yeah, people. We'll, we'll, we'll get with you yeah, and exactly. let you know if we're going to have a spot for you there. So, hey, Mason, but, but Dante. <laughs> so, so Dante for the, for tip of the association and Viva Fresh. I mean. Is there anything that we have uh, failed to mention? You know, Craig, Ed, guys, we talked about this when we first got on. We could literally do this all day. This could be an eight-hour podcast without even blinking an eye. And I mean, look, an hour an hour 11 has already passed, and we had so much more we, we discussed even trying to tackle. Um, folks, can I, those can I say, though, I'm, I'm excited about the virtual field tour coming back? I mean, Absolutely. for those of you that were in Austin, I think it was that first year that was super exciting. We had a couple glitches in between, but we're coming back strong with the virtual field tour. I think that's going to be really cool. Not everybody Guys. gets the opportunity to visit growing regions. And I think there's a lot of value there, you know, to sort of be able to get both best of both worlds, actually be on site an event and see um, a growing operation is, is pretty impressive. Well, and, and Ed, you know, and I know, I know we're at time, so I'll just touch on that real quick, but the virtual field tour is different. Just like, just like the pandemic drove us to use video conferencing. I mean, video conferencing has been around for a long time, but we just kind of ignored it, didn't really accept it. And then the pandemic pushed us to it and there was a little resistance early on, but we jumped into it. Technology is there. Technology has been there and we are trying to show the industry we should be using technology to our benefit to communicate, not just to our buyers, not just to our industry, but to consumers as well in new ways so they understand and we can address their questions about fruits and vegetables. And virtual field tour is going to be that. The audience in Dallas is going to be live. They're going to be broadcast directly to an onion field in South Texas where we're going to have someone standing by and we're going to talk about and have an engagement between the audience and the folks in the field where we discuss what's happening and they get to see, ah, that's what the onion coming out of the ground looks like. That's how you get the roots in the top off. That's how that onion begins its process to your plate. That is technology. That is our industry. And that is unique thinking. And I love that because that is one of the core pillars of Viva Fresh, right? How do we drive consumption? How do we build awareness? We use technology to do it. My only question is, how are you going to fit all the people that are going to want to go to that session? I mean, are, are, is it going to be at Cowboy Stadium or where, where are you going to do this? Hey, bro, that that session is going to hold 250, 300 people. My wow. suggestion, get there early, right? It's going to be after the meet and greet breakfast on Friday morning. So get your fuel, whether, whether that's coffee with a stick of butter, ew, uh, or you want an actual breakfast, uh, like, you know, uh, um, Sugar come mom. get your breakfast, meet with each other, talk, go into the virtual field tour. It's probably going to be standing room only. I mean, that's what we had the last couple virtual field tours and be prepared to have your socks knocked off, right? This isn't, this isn't going to be pre-recorded. We're not going to be talking about a video that was already recorded. We're going to be talking to someone in the field as it happens. So we're excited. We got a lot of great things on the lineup for Viva Fresh. I know we could do this all day. I know we're already way Yeah, I was going to say, hour. I mean, I, I think that we have, if we haven't made the case for Viva Fresh by this point in time, we're not going to make it with the yeah. people that are listening. That's just that simple. So a couple of things, Ed, uh, mm -hmm. any quote for this week? Did you, did you mm -hmm. come with something or you, 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 you know, I really didn't. I thought I was coming yeah. strong with the Pavlov's dog thing, but um, yeah. I'll well, save, that, save for, that now. Apparently I'll save that for now. Viva. 
So I did bring mine. So so my quote for this oh, one, I thought this was this was so I, this one is a very simple quote. This is not as motivational as they typically are. Almost everything will work again if you unplug it for a few minutes. Even you. And that's Anne Lamont. And wow. realistically, what that's saying, obviously, I mean, I think it's obvious, is, you know what, we all need to every now and then unplug, take a few minutes, even if it's just in the course of the day, start your morning off, but you should always just unplug for a few minutes and reboot, just like you do your computer and anything else. Unplug for a little bit and then collect yourself, and then uh, all of a sudden you'll you'll go back to work again, so... If, if I can, I have kind of a, a silly quote that I use when people give me, you know, when they're kind of joking with me or ribbing me about eating my salad for lunch. Chips may not give you cancer, but they won't keep you from cancer or other health diseases either. That's true. So as we, as we circle it all back around to food. Guys, yes. I've sincerely appreciated it. This has been great. I love doing this, uh, what, twice a year now, right before Viva and at Viva. Um this is fantastic. I always enjoy this. I, I enjoy our back and forth. And for those that don't know, I, I love Craig's Wu Tang sweatshirt. I, I hope to see that emerge again. In <laughs> yeah, the you got future. everybody. I'm telling you right now. If if you if you're not watching, I've got my my favorite hoodie on, which is my Wu Tang hoodie. And uh, I was telling the guys before the show started, I get more compliments on this Wu-Tang hoodie than any shirt, anything that I wear. So uh, I had no idea Wu-Tang, I guess, was, uh, I, I, I guess, as Dante said, is, is anybody that was ch children of the 80s, or in my case, I really don't get to claim being a child of the 80s, I'm more child of the 70s. But um, yeah, long and short of it, it's been a popular deal. Hey, guys, I want to share something real Wait. quick. I, I found a quote. I mean, no, I, uh, I found a quote that I wanted okay, to share. Okay, well, get your quote while I'm pulling up the share. Okay, you, you pull, pull that up quote. because I had it on my my phone, but I'd forgotten. We'd been I'd been keeping a list, um, and I'd forgotten about it, so I accessed it. Super short. Continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. Who said it? Say that one more time. Continuous improvement is better than delayed perfection. Henry Ford. He's an author. Hmm? Oh, no. Author. Um, well known. He's an author. Well known. Continuous wrote some. Ah, forget it. We're running out of time. Mark Twain. Mark Twain. There you go. Couple things. If you're interested in Viva Fresh, the website is www.vivafreshexpo.com. Uh, again, registration is live. Hotel rooms. That hotel has 1,800 hotel rooms, but. Uh, we only have a certain block at a great discounted rate of about $260 a night. So make sure that you book your, uh, your registration first, and then you get the link, book a hotel room. Uh, March 30th to April 1st at the Gaylord Texan in Grapevine, Texas, three miles from DFW. If you're interested in the association, www.texipa.org. That's our Texas International Produce Association website. Uh, lots of great things. You got to be a member though, to get some of the special perks like our newsletter and updates on the information. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, where people can go for some more information on either of those things. Listen, guys, I, like I said, I love this kind of stuff. I could literally do this with you guys all day. Um, and, and I just want to say thank you again. I have sincerely enjoyed this and I look forward to the follow-up happening in two months in the middle of the expo floor. Hopefully I get that invitation. Um, you know, not to be too presumptuous, I guess, but, uh, guys, this has been absolutely great. I love it. And just one last reminder to everybody in the industry, come to Viva Fresh. We welcome you. We'd love to have you there. We want to see everyone there. And in the meantime, eat your fruits and veggies. They're good for you. Doesn't got to be part of every meal, although we would love it, but man, make sure you're at least eating them in the day. We've got to change those stats. Our kids have got to be eating fruits and vegetables. Our, our society's got to be eating fruits and vegetables. We are the engines for change because we are the providers of those items. So let's be the great examples that we know we can be. I love it, Dante. Ed. Very, very eloquent. For, yeah. those, for those of you still on and listening to us, 
Um, <laughs> don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook at the Fresh Cred and at Cred Fresh on Twitter as well. Please send us your feedback, questions, comments, concerns at thefreshcred at gmail.com. Hey, and speaking of LinkedIn, just be sure and check out on Saturday mornings, if you check out Craig Slate's LinkedIn, I'm posting up three or four things each week that I found interesting, informative, intriguing, or whatever. Check that out. And usually I'm also posting up a link to uh, the the podcast here so you can have a quick, easy way to get to it. But uh, check me out there on LinkedIn as well. And guys, thank you very much. Thanks, Mason, for all the hard work, sir. I appreciate all you do. And, uh, guys, we will see you, uh, I guess, in uh, Gaylord in Grapevine, Texas. See you soon. We'll see you guys. All right. Take care.